Be still and know that I am God. The be still is your part. Knowing that he is God is your part. The next part of that verse is his part. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted among the people. That's his will. You will not see him exalted among the people and exalted among the heathen if you don't do the first part of verse 10. The be still part. I remember one time someone looking at me and saying, yeah, I know God's word said be still. So what about it? To tell you the truth, I nearly came out of my skin. <laughs> because I know how tough that be still is. The person was saying it so casually. The be still is not easy. Some people think be still means don't do anything. No. The very word be still is an act of faith. It is not non-activity. Most people interpret scripture the way they think it is. The way it ought to be interpreted. No. When the Bible says be still and know that I am God. It's talking about stilling the storms that are raging on the inside of you. With the knowledge that he is God. Still on the throne. It takes a lot of Holy Ghost guts and gumption to come to that place, my friends. It will not happen simply. It's tough. Believe me, it's tough. By the time you can even still the voices that you hear raging on the inside of you, it takes time. It differs from person to person. If you're used to doing it over a period of time, maybe you can do it in a couple of minutes' time. But for most others, it may take even three days or four days. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. And if you think it's just a casual reading of that verse that will get the job done, think again. It's the people and the heathen you're contending with. But more than that, it's the inside churning up of so many voices. That you have to face up to. Parangan. Nīngal aman dirindhi. Nāne devan endra harindhu kollungal endra kattar pēsum vela ilhe. Idhi nāam saya vendi avaru pāngam. Nāam idhai saitha al oļiya. Vetriyai pārkka mudiyadhi. Yen endra al nambikkai atra sūl nilai endra andha uru sūl nilai yai kurithu pēsum pūrudhe. Nambikkai atra uru idamaga irukkaradhi endra nāam. அரிந்த உடனே உள்ளத்திலே பல காரியங்கள் எழும்புகிறது when we know that the situation is hopeless immediately there are questions that begin to rise up on the inside of us now we got to still that it's not easy it's simply not easy You go to a doctor and they discover something in you. The first time you listen to what they're saying, it's like a sledgehammer coming straight on your head. You don't even know whether you're hearing right. You thought these things happened to someone else. Now they're saying, no, it's happened to you. How many can relate to what I'm saying this evening? Don't tell me you're in heaven and I'm on earth. You can't even believe what he's saying. It's taking time for those words to even sink into your spirit. But by the time it's sunk into your spirit, there's something else rising up from the inside of you. Why Lord? Why this? Why that? Now, in the midst of all the whys, you see verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Not easy. It's easy to hear it in a controlled atmosphere like this. This is like a sterile place. It's one thing to hear it here. It's another thing to hear it outside. In a world 
where crude and rude and harsh things happen. But I'll tell you something, this word has never changed. That's the, that's the most amazing thing of all. Circumstances change, but God never changes his word. His word is always the same, be still. And know that I am God. Know that I am God. Know that I am God. Then you move to verse 11. Senegalin kathe namodi rikra. The Lord of hosts, the Lord of battles is with us. Now the Lord of battles is with us. Comes only after you know that he is God. Over the circumstance you are facing. It's very hard for you to say the Lord God of battles is with me. When you see all hell break loose. But we have heard so much about all hell breaking loose that we have never heard about what happens when all heaven breaks loose. When all heaven breaks loose, there's nothing that can stop you from progressing and moving on in victory, my friends. That's what our brother was praying a little earlier. If you listen to that first prayer. We are victors. More than conquerors. That's what he said. You must listen carefully to what is being prayed. Because most often God's communicating something to you. If you thought the message that you are to receive would only come from the pulpit, think again. It can come anyhow. God may choose to speak anyhow to you. You are a victor, not a victim. More than a conqueror. But you got to get it into your heart. Receive it into your spirit. Believe it's true. But when you take a look at yourself, it doesn't look like you're more than a conqueror. It looks like you're the one who's made a victim, a scapegoat. Forget it! What are you trying to prove anyhow? To a fallen world that you're not fallen? Forget it! You stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is your ultimate judge, my friends. How you fare before him matters. You don't have to prove anything to anybody. You're not any worse than the worst sinner, my friends. Let me tell you this. Nor are you any better than the worst sinner either. He needs a savior, you need a savior. He needs a healer, you need a healer. He needs grace heaped upon grace. You need heap, grace heaped upon grace. What an amazing verse. Senegalin katta namodu irukra. Anal adai nam purindu kolvadirukku munbadage. Amandirindu avare katta andavar. Endu nam mudalavadu purindu kolla vendum. Arindirukka vendum. if you want to see the maximum victory in your life, my friends, it comes when you practice verse 10. Some people say, well, I'm, is it meditation, pastor, you're talking? No, I'm not talking about meditation. I really am not talking about the meditation that you're thinking I'm trying to communicate to you. Most people try to transcendent and meditate. Instead of transcendenting, they fall in their meditation. Half of them are falling asleep. Doesn't help them one bit. This is not talking about TM. It's not talking about transcendental meditation. It's talking about knowing God. The only way you know God is when you know Him through His Word. You cannot know God apart from His Word. 
So your stillness comes as God's word rules and reigns supreme in your spirit. For that there is effort. You have to read the word. Someone called me the other day, wanted to talk about some situation that had erupted in her life. She was talking about so many things. And I said, okay, let's pray. Just pray. The Spirit of God just told me. Find out whether she's read the word today. So just about to say bye and cut the line. I just said, just hold on one sec. Have you read God's word today? She looked at me and said, No, the Lord's been dealing with me about it for some time. I said, what? How do you expect to overcome? Please listen. If you don't have God's word in you. I mean, this one is applicable to her. It applies to everybody. Whether you are in ministry or outside ministry, it doesn't really matter. You need God's word. Stillness can come into your heart only when you hear the word. Take a good look at Jesus when he was calming the storm. He said, peace be still. The question was, is where was peace? There was confusion outside. There was waves beating against the boat. Horrible tempest, life threatening situation. It looked like everybody is going to drown, and they were not ordinary people, they were fishermen, they knew how to swim. For them, it was hopeless. All of a sudden, they wake up the carpenter, <laughs> ex carpenter, get up, do something. Isn't it amazing that people who pride themselves in their work spot? Have to turn to the next carpenter for advice. Wake him up. Do something, Jesus. Don't you care that we perish? He jumped up. Calm the storm. Then looked at them and said, O ye of little faith, why did you doubt? And the question is, from where did he call the calm? When he said, peace be still, from where did he bring the peace? Peace was already on the inside of him. There was stillness in Jesus' spirit that God was still God over the storm. He knew that the Messiah would never die by drowning. He would always meet his end only one way on the cross. So when the storm came up, it looked like everybody else would die. He said, no, this is not our time. It's not over till God says over. Can I have an amen please? And it's the same prophetic word to you. It's not over till God says over. Somebody has written you off. They have literally rung the death knell on your life. Your future. Please listen. It's not over till God says over. Varuvelai saavumani adithi. Inimel even, Varke Wundra Lama Lagum, even Inimel Wundra May Seya Mata and Varke Ile, Yendri Makar, Unglai Parte, Tavarana Tirka, there is an Avarte ever will pay Serendalum, Adu Ungladi Mudi Valle, Katha Radadan Ungal Mudi Vendri Sonal Uriya, the Ungal Mudi Valle. Can I have an amen from this church? So you see a twofold play. One is God's part, one is your part. So you're going to come the storm outside from where? The peace which is dominating you already on the inside. Ullatle samadhanam irukka vendum. Kondalipu urvele ungulu kullaga irukka mendral. The Pata of the Vasanate Mindum Vasite and the Vasanam Ungal Valke Art Columbadike Vadie Ningal Tarakavind. You got to open up avenues by which this verse, verse 10, begins to dominate your mind, dominate your spirit, dominate your heart. 
the stillness that comes from knowing God, that He is still God. Look at verse 11. Senegal in Kathir, Namod Irikra, Yaakob in Devan, Namaku in the Adekalumanava, Sela. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Then you find the word Selah. Stop and think. Don't just run into the word Psalm 47. That's what most people do. They're like, you know, doing a marathon through the Psalms. They want to prove something to somebody. Oh, I read Psalm 46, 48, 49, 50. Really? What did you read in 46 first? <laughs> By the time they jumped into Psalm 50, they're already wondering whether God heard them. Selah, stop and think. Who's with you? The Lord God of battles. That means a battle is not a new phenomenon for him. It may be for you. It's not for him. He's already seen it earlier. He has overcome the worst of the worst. So when he is with you, you will overcome as well. Don't ever think that because you're a peculiar person, your life's problem is only a peculiar problem. No. You're a peculiar person because of the peculiar God you serve. Not because of the peculiar problem that you have to face in life. Can I have an amen? Not because of the peculiar problem. You have a peculiar God. <laughs> Every other God will take off running in the other direction. This God will stand and fight. And he doesn't stand and fight from behind you. He stands and fight from in front of you. That's why he's peculiar. You think he'll back down from a confrontation with the devil? Never. Never. He'll stand there. He'll stand tall. He'll be up front. He is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Why the God of Jacob? Why not the God of Israel? Because Jacob knew what it was to run into this God for refuge. When he needed tough times to turn into Times of miracles. Laban was out to kill him with his sons. He ran into the God of refuge. Suddenly he heard Esau's coming. He thought one problem is over. After all, I'm going into the promised land. Maybe when I meet my father Isaac, it's going to be blessing upon blessing. Someone said, forget it. Someone else is coming to meet you. He said, who? Esau. Really? Maybe I'm going to get a Hawaii treatment. Is he coming with garlands, dancing? He said, no, no, he's not coming with garlands and dancing. There are 400 men who are riding with him. You must have seen Jacob's face. Blood draining off his face. All of a sudden looking anemic. Someone must have looked at him and said, Jacob, did you hear? He said, yeah, I heard. I heard. But I tell you something. That night he wrestled with someone. And that someone transformed his life. That's the God we are talking about my friends. All of us face tough times. Tell you sometimes it's horrible. Why it's horrible? It's not because of the tough times. It's because of the people who sit and judge you. Most often they are church crowd. I mean, if unbelievers judge you, it's a different matter. It's when church folks say that you're the worst sinner. That's why you're going through this mess. That's horrible. They don't even know the pain that you go through. They don't know that num the amount of tears you're shedding in private. They don't know how many times you have to bend your knee before the living God. They don't see it. They don't know it. They don't care about it either. But they'll just sit on judgment seat and very simply say, Oh, she's suffering because of that. Don't you know a father did this and this and this? What about your father's question? What did he do? 
They said, no, my father never did anything. Really? He didn't do anything at all? No. Never accepted Christ. Why did he need to have Christ? He never did any man wrong. Well, we know where he's gone. I said, we know where he's gone. If you didn't know, I'll tell you. I have enough guts to tell it. Hell! That's what we always face. Very simply people sit and accuse you of this and accuse you of that and judge you for this and that. My friends, listen carefully. This God is a God who is our refuge. My question is this. Did he cut a sorry figure before Esau? No. In every way he looked, the way God wanted him to look, a man blessed of God, a man dependent on God, not dependent on physical prowess, dependent on spiritual prayer. Esau couldn't touch him. The most amazing thing is this, Esau looked at him and hugged him and kissed him and cried. Must have been terrible. The 400 men who came with Esau must have been surprised. Not easy for them to digest. They must have heard of how this man whom they are going to meet robbed their boss of his blessing. I mean if he was blessed more they would have got paid more. So they were gunning to see who this man is. And here they see their boss get down from this camel and a horse and just go running and catch his younger brother and hug him and kiss him and cry over him. I'll tell you, when God fights for you, no man can resist you. And that includes family as well. For some people think it's only external people. No, it includes family as well. Nobody can fight you. Esau was not someone else. It was his own brother, sibling. Those people hate me for speaking this. They really don't care. I didn't come here to preach what they like. I came here to preach what God asked me to speak. And that's part of the miracle blessing we have. Where the family of four, if we run into the God of Jacob for our refuge, not our own mind, our own ideas, our own smart thinking, our own physical strength, that's not good enough. If you run into the God of Jacob, who is our refuge, you will never fail, my friends. We're going to stop with that for now. And I tell you, God's in the house this evening. How many of you believe he's here? If you have a problem, I just want you to bow your heads right now, where you are, before we stand up. Wherever you are, I want you to place it before God this evening. You, have, you are messed up in some area. Somebody's trying to mess you up bad. Somebody's even mocking you, questioning your decision, maybe even trying to pass judgment on your life. Listen, God will fight for you. I'm saying this prophetically, God will fight for you. Namale Velile, Urvele, Uri Eder Pod and Ingle in the Edatir Kavandir Pir Glendal, Sulnele in Eder Pirandalam Seri, Mani Dergal Ungulke, Viro the Maga Erumbi, Idanaladan Ide, Nadakare the end of Suli, Ungal, Walke Kurite, Nyayan Tirpe, Avergal, Ungle Ederage, Uraitir Parglendal, Dive Sede, in the Nerthle Jebungal. Katar Ungulaka Yutate Nadapipa Yakob in Devan Ungla de Adekalamana Varaga Irupa. He will be your refuge, my friends, the God of Jacob. I am saying it prophetically. It will stand. What I am saying will stand. I want you to pray. Don't let somebody write your epitaph even before it's over. God is in charge of your life, my friends.
I said, God is in charge of your life. Keep praying. Keep seeking his face. It's between you and him, my friends. No one has a right to interfere in what you're praying this evening. It's you and he. He washed you in his blood. He has a right over your life. I said, he has a right over your life. You're not answerable to God because of somebody and somebody and somebody. No, no, no. It's you, him. Him, you. I want you to pray. If it looks messy, the mess will turn around and it will become your message. God will turn the tide around. Varanda nirathai, nir utrai, matrigare, devan ungal devan. Uruvelai kashtamana uru sulnilai ki in mati le ningal irindalam. Katar ungal kaga yutatai nadapipa. God will fight for you. I said, God will fight for you. It's far better to shed tears before the living God than to stand in shame before a world, my friends. Don't be ashamed of the living God. He will not mock you. He will not cast you aside. He will not push you away. He is your glory and the lifter up of your head. He will fight for you. You are standing alone. Remember, you are not alone. The God of Jacob, who is your refuge, is the Lord God of battles as well. Jehovah Sabaoth. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord of hosts, He is with you. You are not alone. Thaniyaga nirkaren indu dayav seedhu ninei kaadirgal. Senegal in karthar ongloodu kuda irukkara. Your tide will turn. The tide will turn around. The situation will turn. The season, this season of your life will give way to the blessing of God, my friends. I said this horrible season in your life will turn around and give way to the blessing of God. It may look like the winter of your life right now. But I'll tell you, winter will give way. To the best blessing of all. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not speaking poetically. I'm speaking prophetically, my friends. I am speaking prophetically. It looks bleak. It looks cold. It looks like horrible. It looks like nothing is working. Where is God when it hurts? My friend, He is with you. He is with you. What do you mean it's horrible? He is with you. He will never let you down. His right hand of righteousness will uphold you. He will keep you. The blessings of Joseph will be your portion, my friends. You will be blessed in the city. You will be blessed in the field. Your life will be a fruitful bow. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Your life will be a fruitful bow. Kani kodukum or maganagum, magalagum, mungal varke, nitya magabe irkum, son the pogadirgal. Son the pogadirgal. Don't be depressed. Don't be disheartened. This is the word of the Lord to you. This season of your life will turn around, will give way to blessing, prosperity. The good things of God will blossom in your life, my friends. Fruitfulness will be your portion. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Some of you are asking, when Lord? When? Well, it begins from now. I said it begins from now. It begins from now. Because when the word of the Lord goes from Jerusalem, He will teach us of His ways. He will show us His paths. The word of the Lord will go forth out of Jerusalem. And it will stand to bring forth according to its kind. You don't have to wait for 15 days, 20 days. It happens from now, my friends. From now, now. From this very night. While you sleep, God is at work. He is watching over you. He is touching people's lives. Influencing them to come into your life. And to help you. And speaking prophetically. Receive it this evening. Receive it this evening. 
receive it this evening உங்களுக்காக கர்த்த ஒரு சில நபர்களுடைய இருதயத்திலே இந்த நேரத்தில் தாமே பேசுகிறார் உங்களுக்கு உதவி செய்யும்படிக்கு அவர் செய்கிறார் right now while you are here you the devil is telling you no nothing is happening no god saying you telling you it's happening my friends he is working on your behalf he's already started the miracle is on its way you will testify about it you will speak about it you will sing about it you will be the redeemed of the lord who will come to zion with songs of thanksgiving and praise hallelujah to the lamb even before the week is over you will have something to sing about you will have something to talk about you will have something to lift the name of god on high because god is at work right now right now he is working right now he is moving right now he is bringing to pass his plans and purposes he is speaking to individuals he is moving them to come into your pathway he is moving them to take notice of you he did it for people like potiphar the keeper of the prison then why won't he do it in your life my friends why do you doubt mama raba shaba raba li bari bari bara ba la bari bari antra ungalku udavi seiyumbadikku inda nerathil thame karthe palamakkalude irudhayathile avar pesugirar ungal mugathai avargal ullangalile kondu varugirar he is bringing your face in their hearts my friend right now right now you are praying here you are hearing the word of the lord somewhere god is at work already he is bringing your face your life before people they will begin to contact you they will begin to come forward to help you they will begin to show you favor they will begin to say we are here to help you strangers will build your walls i said strangers will build your walls all you have to do is arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you you will begin to see it listen i am going to be here you can always judge this prophecy that's why i ask you to write down the date write down the time write down what words are being said don't just listen to something for fun you judge what is being said it's up to you to judge what is being said it's up to you by the spirit of god to discern what is being said and see the fulfillment of it it will come to pass my friend you will come with songs of thanksgiving and joy oh hallelujah 